So for those of you who don't know, this is Jen Escare. Um, she goes by Doc Jen Fit on Instagram. So uh, I wanted to bring her on here because we both share a background in gymnastics and we both have kind of like this fitness, gymnastics, mobility, uh, functional body weight kind of vibe going on. And I wanted to have your opinion um, about kind of how it, how you feel like an athlete again and like what that means to you. So starting off, you know, when, when did you retire from gymnastics and what void did that leave for you? I retired at 16. So actually right before my junior year in high school and it was a tough choice. I remember I had to actually write a letter to my mom instead of just telling her because I was like so scared to tell her that I was like done. <laughs> and then she, of course, then went and told my coach. And then I had a long discussion with my coach. And I mean, it was, it, it's part of my identity. Even during summer, it was like, okay, great. You're not in school. Now you're going to practice more. So it was definitely one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make, even to this day, I would say, because it was just so a part of who I was as a person. Um, and then coming out of there, though, I also felt at so much peace. And I, would, I made the decision solely for myself, where my mom wanted me to stay in, my coaches wanted me to stay in, everyone else wanted me to stay in. And so making that decision and coming to that was like, it was really good for my heart and my soul. <laughs> Absolutely. And what, like, how did you get back into fitness? What was that journey from, okay, I feel peace and wow, I can do all these other things. So that was the same way. I actually still have the letter somewhere. Like I didn't write it to my mom, but I wrote it to like my, my, my space friends. <laughs> and it was such a hard decision, same thing. Um, and then you leave it and you feel a sense of relief, but then it's like still ingrained in you. So it's like a part of who you are and you end up kind of coming full circle. So what did that journey look like for you to come back to it? Well, for me, we always had to be in a sport all through like grade school through high school. So it was, my parents were like, okay, if you're going to make this decision now, what? It was kind of like, okay, you still have to do something though. So <clears throat> that's when I found track and I kind of dabbled in that. I dabbled in dance and I just, so I kept myself active in different ways that weren't, I knew I wasn't going to be at the highest level competing anymore. It was, it was more so for fun and for movement and just kind of exploring what else I could do. Um, so it became like a fun little journey in seeking that. <clears throat> and then when I got, and, I, and then I started coaching gymnastics as well. And I remember there was, my mom snuck me into LA Fitness one time and she would always just be like, oh, just follow me and follow me and we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't recommend it, but <clears throat> she would sneak me in and I would go to the Pilates class with her. And I fell in, I remember the, my first Pilates class at Matt Pilates and I fell in love and it was like, oh my God, this is like conditioning. This is everything we did in gymnastics. Yeah. And I remember even someone asking the teacher afterwards, like, oh, how did you get into this? And she was like, oh, well, I was a gymnast. And I was like, oh, see, it's meant to be. <laughs> and I felt like I found my place. Yeah. And, and when I was coaching gymnastics, um, a lady came in and she started a Pilates boot camp at the gymnastics gym and because she was building it up she allowed any of the coaches to come for free and so I hopped right on that and I was like well I'm coming for free all the time then and I was like her little I would call it like her project because she didn't have anyone really coming to the class consistently yet yet I showed up every single time and so she got to I got to understand my body in a whole other way it was like yeah I'm strong I could do planks I could do these things I would go into a yoga class and like show everyone up but when I actually started to like really think about what my body was doing and how it was working. It like opened my eyes up so much more. So she taught me so much about the body and really just like all these little stabilizing muscles that I never think about and how to actually challenge myself to make what I think is easy look act or actually feel a lot more challenging and difficult within my body. And I fell in love. Exactly. Okay. And so that led you, for those of you who don't know, she's a physical therapist. So did that kind of spark your interest to uh, becoming a physical therapist? Um, is that why you got really interested in learning about the body? Um, was that the, the progression? 
Well, you know, because I've, I had just been active like that entire time, I knew that I loved the body and movement and I liked anatomy when I was in high school. I liked biology. So I was like, well, let me do kinesiology. I didn't really know what I was going to do with that yet, but it was like, here's a major on the study of human movement. That yeah. sounds like something I'm interested in. <laughs> and so I went into there and I was still teaching, um, I was still I was teaching Pilates by this time and I was coaching gymnastics as well. And although those were great, there was, I was always like, well, what else? Like, why am I taping an ankle and why am I modifying around her back pain or her knee pain for Pilates? Like I can do that and I can modify great, but I want, I was always seeking more and seeking how I could continue to help and what I needed to learn. And so that's where it was like physical therapy just made sense to me. And I was like, that's, that's where I'm going. Absolutely. And so, you know, you, you want, you end up wanting to solve people's mm-hmm. problems. Yeah. And I think that is a very, it could be gymnastics, but I think it's a very athletic mindset too, because of the competitive nature of like wanting to be better, wanting to fix, wanting to win. So what, what does it mean, your opinion, to be like physically and mentally to be an athlete? Oh man. Um, I think, well, when I was in college and I actually started taking, um, the psychology behind learning a lot about sports and stuff, I I was like, wow, if I only had that in, in gymnastics, I mean, you grow up in gymnastics, such a baby, you know, I didn't really, I didn't have this mindset and the psychology behind things. It was kind of just like, just go, (laughs) just do. And that's probably why they started so young. Cause it's like, you have no fear, like just go. Um, but really when you start to develop and understand the psychology behind it and how you're overcoming fear, how you're stepping through challenges, how you're, you're utilizing your mind to visualize what you're going to create. And that's where you really start to understand this power of manifestation, where it was like, I know that so many people go into grad school and, you know, a lot some people don't even get into grad school. It's hard to get into grad school. And a lot of people weren't making it. And I was just like, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do it. And I feel like I practiced manifestation because I was a gymnast. And that's what we did. We would do our visual routines in our head all the time before competition and everything. And I already started to learn this powerful tool before I even knew what it was. And I've carried that 100% into my life. And being able to embody that mindset into taking care of my body, listening to what my body needs and moving into that in a really healthy, smart way, probably smarter than what was in gymnastics, (laughs) but but actually taking care of myself and understanding how the mind is connected to the body and man- being able to manifest like literally whatever I want now, it's everything. Yeah, it's priceless. Like you don't, you don't realize it. Because I remember learning about the secret when I was mm-hmm. like 13 or 14. I was like, okay, so this is like a thing. And so it's, it's visualization. We, you know, visualize our beam routine before we start, you know, and then if it's not perfect, we restart and only see that. Um, but same thing, like manifesting is such a huge thing in health and fitness. And just doing that can translate to all different areas of your life when you realize the power of it. So what would be your advice to other people for how they can get some of that, you know, athletic mindset? Maybe, maybe they weren't in gymnastics in particular, or they, they just were a former athlete. Um, how can they tap back into that or reconnect with that to have that sense of purpose again? For me, it's really about what am I saying to myself and holding myself accountable on a daily basis. So if I say I want to make something happen, write it down. Like I put things on my board where I can visualize it and I can see what I want to create on a daily basis, especially when you're able to get that out of your head. (laughs) It's just, it's healthier anyways, because then it's not stuck here. So when you write it out and you're able to visualize it, you're able to really it's in your, your wheelhouse a lot more and you're able to get it done and get it 
and, and finish things. And as well, being your word means that if I say I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out, I'm going to go to the gym and work out. If I say I'm going to get something done for someone else, like for a business deal or whatever it may be, I'm going to get it done because I said I was going to. So you practice being your word for other people and in business and in creating things by being your word first to yourself. And that's a whole mental shift that you'll be able to like create things and make things happen. So just being a word to your own body and taking care of this first is going to help you in every area of life. Totally agree. And that could be as simple as I'm going to make my bed this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I am going to work out and I'm going to work out at this time. It doesn't happen at this time. I'm going to work out at this time. So you have like yeah. plan A, plan B, but you're still, you're not making an excuse for yourself. Right. Saying, exactly. Oh, well, I did this today. You know, you are sticking to it. And that is the hardest thing for so many people. Yeah. And so I guess just kind of like as, as a takeaway, I want everyone to commit to one thing today that you are going to do for yourself and stick to your word um, and, and celebrate it when, when you actually succeed. Because I think a lot of us are, are our own worst critic and mm -hmm. we do not congratulate ourselves or celebrate our wins enough. We look at what we didn't do and mm -hmm. think that was a failure instead of I did this little thing and it got me closer to here. And when mm -hmm. you, ah, it snowballs and gets bigger and bigger, and that's where you have this sense of achievement. And it's not wrong to feel that joy. It's not like it's going to be taken away from you or anything. Yeah. Um, so last thing I guess would just be, what does it mean to train like a gymnast? <laughs> <laughs> train like a gymnast means that you're, you're truly going for it full out, no matter what it might look like. And fail after fail after fail, you're going to get back up and you're going to continue to, to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. There's no end in sight. You're going to get it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jen, for hopping on. I really appreciate it. And um, if anybody has any questions, you can definitely reach out to her. Go ahead and you can sign off with how people can get a hold of you. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram the most and you can find a lot of help just by scrolling through my Instagram. <laughs> um, so Doc Jen Fit on Instagram, Doc Jen Fit on website, on Facebook, on YouTube, Doc Jen Fit across the board, really easy to find me. Perfect. Thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, you too. All right. Bye Jen.